You can automate changes in color grading in DaVinci Resolve by using keyframes to control grading parameters and even locations of power windows. Let's start off by color grading this first clip. We're gonna switch over to the color page. We've only got one node here at the minute. And what you need to do is come down and click this button to open up the keyframe viewer. If you wanna make more space, click on this button here. And now as we move the playhead through this keyframe section, it's also gonna move the playhead in the main viewer window. We've only got one node, that's this corrector here. But if we were to add a second node, we now get this corrector too. So you can add keyframes for different nodes. I'm just gonna delete this node because we only want one for this demo. What we can do is move this playhead and add keyframes and each keyframe can model the change between color grading parameters. We'll make sure we're at the start here. And the easiest way to create keyframes is by clicking this button here to turn on automatic keyframing for corrector one, or in other words, changes we make to this color grading node. At the minute, we don't have any keyframes down here. To automatically create a keyframe, we just need to modify some of the parameters. So I'm gonna come into the primaries here and I'm gonna use the saturation, which is gonna left drag the mouse button to reduce this all the way to zero to completely desaturate the image. Notice down here, it's created this little dot and this little dot represents a keyframe. So we can either use the playhead in the keyframe window or the playhead in the viewer here. It's also gonna move this red keyframe playhead. And let's say we wanna transition and about here, we want the image to be in full color. All we need to do is leave the playhead here and because we've got automatic keyframing turned on, we can modify the saturation. Just gonna double click it to reset it to the default. Maybe we'll add a bit of extra saturation. Now watch what happens when I move the playhead. We gradually fade in the color by gradually increasing the saturation. Once we get to this point, the saturation is not gonna change anymore because we've got no more keyframes after this point. You can keyframe multiple parameters at once. So in addition to the saturation, let's also change the contrast. So at the start here, I'm gonna really increase the contrast just so you can see the effect. And we'll click and drag this playhead to the second keyframe. And you can see here that the contrast is one at the minute. And now if we drag this through, the contrast will gradually change. We could decrease the contrast even more. I'm just gonna go over the top just to show the effect. Now we start off black and white high contrast and we end up in full color low contrast. We'll just go to the next clip that we're gonna be working with and I'll just scroll through this. Notice on the left here, this cliff is quite dark or it's in shadow. And as we get closer to the end, we're more or less in full sunlight, so things get brighter. What we wanna do is keyframe the brightness so it changes over time. This time we're gonna be using manual keyframes. We're gonna make sure that we're at the start here, and then we're gonna set the starting exposure for the shadow area. Just gonna use the offset here. And I'm gonna go a bit higher than I would, just so you can see what's going on. Notice at the bottom here, we don't have any keyframe dots. That's because we didn't turn on automatic keyframing. Instead, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose add static or add dynamic keyframe. A static keyframe just holds its value until the next keyframe is reached. Whereas a dynamic keyframe will alter values over time. We're gonna start off with this static keyframe because what we want is we want this exposure to stay the same until we get a bit further through the clip, maybe about here. I'm gonna right click again and add dynamic keyframe. And if we scroll between these two things, nothing's changing at the minute. We'll just make sure we're on this keyframe. By the way, you can zoom in and zoom out of keyframes using this slider here. And between this keyframe and the end of the clip, we want to gradually darken the image. So I'm going to move the playhead all the way to the end here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose add dynamic keyframe. And notice now we get this line between these two keyframes telling us these are dynamic keyframes, or in other words, we're going to change values over time. Now we can go and modify the offset. Set. We're going to make things darker. And if I scroll between these two keyframes, gradually over time, the image gets darker. Between these first two keyframes, because this first keyframe is a static keyframe, we don't see any changes. It's only dynamic keyframes that change values over time. If you want to delete a keyframe, just select it, right click and choose delete selected keyframe. Let's go and take a look at this next clip. This is a clip of a drone moving in over the ocean towards the beach. This time what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe a power window so we only affect the ocean and because the drone is moving closer to the shore we can't just set up a static power window to change the color of this water. To make things easier I'm going to click this button to turn on automatic keyframes and then I'm going to come over to the power window section and we're going to add a power window here 
just going to roughly draw a shape over the ocean. I'm going to use the mouse wheel to zoom out. And the reason I'm going a bit bigger than the actual image is so I can add some softening in a second. So let's say in this case, we want to increase the saturation of the ocean. Maybe we'll add a bit of color boost just to make it look completely unrealistic. If I just turn off power windows and scroll through this, watch what happens now is it starts off okay with just the ocean being affected. But as we move in, now we've got some of the beach being affected and it looks terrible. We could try and fix this by coming back to the power windows and softening off the outside and the inside just to feather things a little bit, but it doesn't actually help us. So I'm just gonna delete this keyframe that we just added by adding the softening and come back to the start here. I'm gonna come over to the left here and I'm gonna turn on the power window overlay and I'm just gonna use the playhead to scroll through the clip. We'll just go and re-add a bit of that inside and outside softening just to help with the blending. And now we'll scroll through this and any time the power window starts to affect the beach, we're gonna grab it and we're gonna move it down. Notice when I do that, because we've got automatic keyframing turned on, it's added a keyframe, which also includes the position of this power window. We can now move through the clip, pull the power window down, move through the clip, pull the power window down, move it down a bit more, and then we'll basically animate the power window off of the image. Let's take a look at this. Now you can see that we're not affecting that beach with the power window because the position of the power window has been keyframed. Just want to show you a quick bonus tip. It's going to right click, choose reset all grades to reset everything, come back to the start of the clip. And suppose in this case, we just wanted to affect the beach in the power windows. I'm going to select pen to draw a power window just over the beach area. Just do a random grade so you can see what's happening. And maybe we'll also add a little bit of softening, then come over to the tracker window here and click this play button to track forward. And this will automatically track the position of that power window as best it can. And in this case, it's done a pretty good job. And that can be a quick and easy way of doing things if you don't want to manually create keyframes. Check out this video next for more DaVinci Resolve tips. I'm Jason Roberts. Please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.